Let's shift to another subject, the velocity of light. In the 17th century, the Johannes Kepler, the famous astronomer, René Descartes, the famous mathematician, and their following, of course, believed that light was instantaneous. They felt that light, its speed was infinite, that light traveled instantly, and that was the sacred dicta. Until 1677, a Dutchman by the name of Olaf Romer, he measured the elapsed time between the eclipses of Jupiter with its moons. He noticed that if you measured the eclipse of, uh, of, of uh, the moons at Jupiter, you'd get about a 15 minute difference depending on where you were on the orbit. If you did it certain times of the year, it would be different. And he began to realize that those distances were such that if he did this cleverly, he could actually measure the speed of light, which he did. And he found out, first of all, that light had a finite speed, a very high speed, roughly 300,000 meters per second, 186,000 miles per second, as we would say it. But the, point, the main point was it was finite. That shook everybody. No one, no one would believe him. He had his data. The physics were something else you need to understand. Scientists like to brag that they're objective. That's baloney. That's utter baloney. They cling to their presuppositions with the same tenacity that we all cling to our prejudices. It takes an abundance of effort, uh, evidence and effort to get these incorrect notions unseated. And uh, Romer's experiment was repeated 50 years later by James Bradley, an Englishman. He confirmed Romer's work, and finally they began to acknowledge, gee, yeah, maybe light is not instantaneous, it has a finite speed. So that was the big breakthrough. Over the last 300 years, light has been measured 164 times at least by 16 different methods. And I thought I'd take you through each one, right? <laughs> no, of course not. Two guys, Barry Setterfield, a dear friend, an Australian, and Trevor Norman, a mathematician, did, were troubled by something. By the way, Barry Setterfield is a, one of the most deeply committed, practicing Christians I know. And he was wrestling with the whole problem, a certain problem in physics, and he, and, and he took it in a prayer as he describes it. How could this be if light is a constant? It was almost like a voice says, who said it's a constant? And he suddenly realized that he was, he was down a blind alley because he, he was in a situation to solve this problem. He'd have to challenge the idea, is light really a constant? So he and Trevor Norman decided to collect information. They went back and were able to dig up the raw data from these experiments through the centuries of the measurement of the speed of light. In 1677, when Romer measured the Io eclipse, his conclusion was that it was a, it, that the speed of light was about 307,600 uh, kilometers per second, with an error range of about 5,400 kilometers per second. Okay, not bad in view of the, those times, of course. In 1875, Harvard, using the same method, repeated the experiment, and because of better technology over you know uh, you know more than 100 years. Um, they had a lower error band. Instead of 5,400 kilometers per second, it was down to 13 kilometers, give or take. You follow me? And uh, then in uh, 1983, the National Bureau of Standards, using a laser, ran their experiment, and they got the error down to 0. .00003 kilometers per second. So as you look through the you know, couple of centuries here, you realize that the technology is improving. The error band is getting much more precise. But that's not what caught Barry Setterfield's eye. What disturbed him is look at the mean. It went from 307,600 down to 299,921, then down to 299,792. It's this, this, the time, the, the, excuse me, the speed is slowly decreasing. It's actually getting asymptotic. A guy, a, a, a mathematician by the name of Alan Montgomery took all the data and subjected it to a rigorous computer analysis and came to the conclusion that the regression, not just of these three experiments, i just give you three to give you a summary, that if you look at all the data, there's a 99% correlation to what he calls a cosecant squared curve. In other words, it's been, if it's going slower now, it went faster in the past. How much faster? Somewhere between 10 and 30% faster in the time of Christ, somewhere about twice as fast in the days of Solomon, somewhere about four times as fast in the days of Abraham, and about 10 million times as fast prior to 3000 BC. Now, this of course, was it was started to be published here over a decade ago, was given the, the, the horse laugh by all the classical physicists. 
who are these characters and, and don't they understand the speed of light? Everybody's been in physics. The more you know about physics, the more you've been into atomic structures, you discover the speed of light is a factor on almost every equation you get into in terms of energy transfers and, and on and on and on. The speed of light's a very fundamental parameter. But that's the point. It's a parameter, not a constant. And so the idea that it's not a constant shook them. But even Einstein expressed surprise during his lifetime that anything would be constant in the universe. He, re he accepted it as a constant, but reluctantly, because he, he, a, 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 he, he withheld some disbelief. So this, first of all, pulls the rug out from under any reckoning of time. You're talking radiological time? Or you're talking orbital time? See, suddenly you're raising some serious questions here. And in the first six days, let's rephrase that. In the first five days of the creation week, who was around? Only God. So I'll take him at his word. <laughs> okay? So, and th this is why more and more scientists are beginning to accept the many evidences in many fields of science that the Earth is actually far younger than most people have any idea. Less than 10,000 years, not millions and millions and millions. Now, we went through a few of those last time. We'll give you some others before our series is over. Now, there are other confirmations here. This kind of thing was mentioned in uh, uh, French Astronomical Journal in 27. Uh, Tom Flander, Van Flanderen in the U.S. Naval Observatory um, mo points out that atomic clocks are slowing relative to orbital clocks. I'll come back to that in a minute. A guy by Trotsky in, in, uh, Gorky in, uh, in uh, Moscow, independent of Satterfield, about the same time, published back in 87 a similar kind of insight. And there have been other. There are, now, I'll tell you what really bothers me. In the last 18 to 24 months, there have been literally dozens of articles in the reputable journals, Nature, Science, these, these the, the highly reputable journals, by different guys who've discovered the speed of light's not constant. What frosts me about watching this parade, on the one hand, I'm gratified to see that we're not, we're not out in left field with some weird idea that this is, this is now becoming uh, accepted, but I find it significant that none of these guys have had the integrity or the character to acknowledge Barry Setterfield's original papers. The abuse that he had from the profession for more than 10 years, um, you'd think would at least merit a reference, but there are none forthcoming. Um, there are now articles around that betray that, and there's plenty of this stuff on the, in, uh, on the internet for those that are interested.